but we can get it on there. It's a little bit loose. Snug it up, get it to the right size, and put it on loosen, and let's see if we can break it free. Yep, we can break it free, and we can also tighten it up. I'm actually really excited about the tool I'm making today. It's quick, it's easy, and it'll probably save my butt in the future. Keep watching. Crow's feet wrenches. A lot of people have these, a lot of people don't. They're invaluable for those bolts that are in blind spots because you're able to, you know, where you're normally not able to get a wrench. Say there's something in your way back here and you can't get the wrench down on the bolt and you can't necessarily get a socket because there's something right directly above it. You're actually able to take your ratchet and an extension, put it on there and actually loosen that bolt. Now, the biggest issue with these is, well, it's not necessarily the issue, but you need one of every single size. And if you're going out and about, you know, to take them all, you need them so rarely, but when you do need them, they're, they're worth their weight in gold. So just like if you're going out and about to fix something, you might not always carry every size of wrench. You might carry the most popular ones, and then you'd throw one of these, you know, you'd throw a nice adjustable wrench in your tool bag just for those oddballs, just in case. Let's do the same thing. Let's take an adjustable wrench, mix it with a crow's foot, so that we can have an adjustable crow's foot wrench. Let's do it. So I went through my adjustable wrenches and I pulled out, I, I put away some of the ones that are nicer and stuff like that, but I, I went through the, uh, the Chinese tool bucket and threw away ones, you know, the ones that I, I think are horrible, I'm not gonna use. This one's not too bad. This one's actually pretty good. I've actually used this one before. This one actually is in the, this is the kitchen. This is actually in the kitchen tools. So it's deemed itself decent enough to take a bolt off once in a while. So the idea is this, what is this size? This is about a seven eighths, which is about a 21 millimeter, right? Yeah, about 21 millimeter. Cause I think what that, now that actually opens up a little bit bigger. It probably opens up to about an inch or 22, 23 millimeters. So this one, you can see the size difference. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to keep and incorporate the thumb screw. We're going to have to keep that in there. So we're going to have to cut it off way down here. Pretty much almost where the handle starts. I mean, we're going to have to just chop it off. Leave enough meat so we don't ruin the integrity of that. But then we need to actually supply a spot for this to actually... To, you know to have the extension actually stick on so then we're going to go over to the scrap sockets the Chinese sockets Taiwanese sockets and pull out a uh, scrap one use these this actually gives me the uh, let's see if they're actually good positive locks they are they got nice detents in them so hold on some sockets are so cheaply made like this one the one I'm not going to use, there's actually no detent in there at all. So that was more likely to fall off. So we're going to use these two. So I'm going to make two different sizes. You can see this is a small like 7 16 And you can see, I mean, there's a lot more. I'm going to cut it right, right here. Same thing right there. But you can see on some of the smaller stuff, I'm trying to keep it as small as possible to not be an obstruction. Where something like this, you know, to use, you know, even though this goes down that small, you got a huge wing out to the side. So we're going to keep this one like that. And we're going to use this one for the bigger sizes. And all we need to do, this one of these sockets is bigger. We use this 916. We'll just weld this to there and that to there. So I'll actually cut off, I guess I'll cut off the entire socket portion. And we'll just weld it right there. And right there, so time to cut this. So normally I just clamp this in my vise and just cut it off, cut off the top portion, but my made in England vise is out of order right now. The uh, screw, the Acme double start screw is actually stripped out a little bit here in the middle. So we're waiting on parts to come in to see if we can uh, fix it up here in a couple days. But for now, what we'll do is we'll just lock this in, the good old vise grips and be dangerous and cut it off. We're still using these a couple years later on these Lennox diamond wheels. Still liking them. 
they're not the best, you know, they're not as fast as an abrasive wheel, but they don't leave as much junk around. They do go slower, but they're always full width. So even on something like this, you know, this isn't even that big. You can see if my wheel was gone really much more, I wouldn't have been able to cut through this in one thing. And that to me is more valuable sometimes than speed is actually just having a full width wheel on my angle grinder. So we got our two little pieces cut off. Now, throw those away. It's just a matter of cutting just straight across there. Did I mention that I missed my vise? So if I look closely, I notice this actually has a taper. And that's because they got they have to uh, incorporate this big thumb screw. All of them do. All of them have a taper. They kind of taper up, which isn't a big deal cuz generally when you go to wrench, you know, you don't put your knuckles down on and you can see how that sits flat is you can get you, you're actually pretty flat against the surface. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm actually going to not weld this this thing straight on where it's yeah, where it's floating up in the air. I want this to actually, I want it to sit flat on the surface. So I'm going to tip that and then make this square wherever that's tipping. So we'll go like that. And essentially, and it doesn't really matter where I weld it. I, at first I thought about kind of welding it over the thumb screw and you just be able to adjust it from behind or you still be able to adjust it. Um, but it really doesn't matter, you know, if this is off centered over here, it really doesn't matter that much as far as the geometry of actually taking a bolt off just for ease I'm just so I'm just gonna put it let's say just right there it's not perfectly you know centered for right now when you're at full width it will not be centered but that doesn't really matter so let's just I guess we'll just reel this all the way in so I don't get any spatter inside there we'll just set this up clamp this to my plate and we'll put a couple tack welds on it. Let me uh, finish welding uh, all the way up, nice and purdy like, purdy as we can. It's all welded around and it functions. So now let's do the small one. Not that this one wouldn't do small holes, but you got that hang off off the side, so might as well just do two while I'm at it. So same thing, just weld that right there. Just get our get our TIG rod, bend it, bend bend our TIG rod straight. Now we'll get this over here, and we'll just go. There we go. We have our adjustable crow foot, and this one, I guess we would use on larger fasteners. The biggest drawback is having that that large hangover the side. This entire adjustable part. But we would use this, I guess, on smaller fasteners because this one is a, a fair amount smaller. But there we go. I guess let's find a bolt and actually test them out. So here is a fair example. We have a uh, bolt directly behind the power steering pulley. And there's no way I can get a socket on it. And generally in an engine bay, there would be um, an inner fender sitting over here. So it would be really hard to get a wrench on. Now, if I was able to get a wrench on it, I'd only be able to do a little bit of a turn, but maybe I couldn't get a wrench on it at all. So that's where the crow foot comes in, but the video is not on where the, uh, what the point of a crow foot is. But we can get it on there. It's a little bit loose. Snug it up, get it to the right size. And put it on loosen, and let's see if we can break it free. Yep, we can break it free. And we can also Tighten it up. Regrip on in a different position. And snug that up nice and tight. Where you normally want to be able to reach. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. That seems to be working out great. Just like a crow's foot. Other uses. You don't have to put an extension on it. You can almost just be straight on. I keep some of these old style... Um, 
adjustable wrenches around because sometimes it's really handy to have a 90 degree. Well, I can have a 90 degree and choose any angle that I want and use it the same way. You can even have it, I guess, back on itself for when it needed to be over the bolt. One of the main Another things use. I use Crescent wrenches for is actually bending metal. They're actually amazing at reforming metal wherever you need to because you can just crimp it all the way down for auto body stuff like that when you got a dent you can bend it back you can bend it wherever you want you know you're limited to the depth of the jaws of about an inch or so but works out very well for that i can do the same thing with this but i can have a little bit more versatility where if this is a blind corner um and i can't get above it or something like the inside of a fender or something i can rebend it and it does a phenomenal job at actually bending it back. A great example would be bending this uh, this lip back if it was just kind of caved up in um, without taking the tire. And even when you take up the tire, sometimes you don't have room to get up in there and use this tool. With this, I can do it from the outside. I can bend it back exactly how I want. Straighten it all back out. So, I'm sure I'll find other uses for it, but I'm excited. I've quite a few custom tools over the years on the channel. Make sure to go check some of those out. Follow me on Instagram if you want to stay up to date on little projects like this and little happenings that are going on. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Have a good one. Bye. These will be the perfect addition to my truck toolbox.